U.S. national versus U.S. citizenship. Should people born in American Samoa automatically be granted U.S. citizenship? So in Utah, a federal judge decided that people born in the territory of American Samoa should be recognized as citizens, U.S. citizens. U.S. citizenship is not granted automatically to natives of American Samoa and the Swains Island. They can acquire citizenship through the process of naturalization. A few Utah residents sued to be recognized as citizens and won. I believe it's a, a matter of having your cake and eating it too. I know uh, a lot of uh, people born in Tutuila or American Samoa uh, prefer the U.S. national right, route because it maintains a semblance of stability when it comes to separation of culture and the United States. Yes. the federal government. Um, however, it's kind of like a cop-out thing because although we try to maintain our status and our culture, we don't want to lose uh, the fasa more, but we do like to take the money. We do like to be a part of the federal grants, the rights afforded to a U.S. citizen. And I think it's either you unanimous, unanimously come together to maintain the status quo or we ultimately decide what we want to do either go all the way in or all the way out do we declare our independence as uh samoa did or do we become full-fledged citizens yes yeah that's a pretty uh pretty good point um i don't think we'll ever go that route uh we'll both will survive independence um but I, I do feel that um, if you're born in American Samoa, because first and foremost, we make up a big percentage of the military. All three of us are all vets and we've all served. Uh, so that should be automatic. Um, it wasn't until my last couple of years in the Marine Corps where I actually went through that, that whole process, like the paperwork, everything. Um, not gonna lie, it took me two years to get my citizenship, that whole naturalization uh, process. Um, yeah, I, I was out. Um, my paperwork was still being processed, everything. And then they called me, uh, after a year of being out. Um, so I went down to Riverside, everything swore in did the whole big ceremony. Uh, but the biggest thing is it gives us the opportunity to actually vote, you know, pick who like every, every vote counts, you know, and um, I know people probably say, oh, what's my vote? We'll do, you know, but there's there's been elections. It might not be a presidential elections, but there are elections where it came down to like that one vote, you know. So your vote could make make that change, you know. But like I said, uh, you brought up a, a pretty good point um, about the whole cultural part of it. Um, even if we become citizens, like that's not going to take away from who we are, where we're from know our culture and everything uh, like you said if, if you're gonna go all in might as well you know we're already we're we're pretty much a part of the u.s you know, the only difference is we we're not citizens not being a citizen means we we can't vote um unless there's there's other stuff you can't do as a u.s national that i'm aware of but as a as to, to my own knowledge is that's that's about it yeah, that's, that's literally it. Um, when you look up uh, the difference between a national and a citizen. So a U.S. national is you sworn your allegiance to the United States. That's it. You are conquered. The only difference between that, you have all the rights and privileges. As a U.S. citizen, you just can't vote federal. And you can't hold certain federal positions. That's it. So to give our... Uh listeners some more context as a u.s national you may not vote in federal elections or hold any federal elected office you have the same rights to live in the u.s as any legal permanent citizen or u.s citizen um, you cannot apply to certain jobs requiring u.s citizenship you have the right to a passport and you're entitled to uh, 
consular protection of the U.S. when you're abroad. And I think you can apply for citizenship um, through naturalization after staying in three months here on uh, U.S. soil. The ASG, we know that the ASG, the a American Samoa government, they are opposed to this and they have argued that automatic U.S. citizenship could undermine local traditions and practices, including certain rules that restrict land ownership only to yep. those of Samoan. And ancestry. there's the key word, land rights. We yes. want to maintain our ability to own the land in American Samoa. Yes. And this topic on the whole U.S., um, the federal judge um, giving U.S. citizenship to uh, these Utah residents, so far we know that it's only this rule only applies to Utah. It doesn't apply to throughout the United States. So, see, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, that that's that's what the pushback was about, um, and that was okay. Yeah. So I, I learned something today. We know. Yeah, the it. biggest controversy concern, concerning this subject was just that matter was land, ownership of the land. Yes. Everything that the government uh, has, aside from certain sites that the VA sits on, and uh, where, where the, what do you call it, the National Guard, those yes. sites are actually owned by the United States or the federal government. However, everything else, every federal building over there, aside from that, those two are leased. They're leased and they're monopolized by certain families, certain families that own land rights to those villages or to those points. And so. And people, yeah, they're just, they're just worried about disrupting uh, cultural traditions. Um, yeah, such as communal land ownership and social structures, um, especially um, extended families led by Matais. Mm -hmm. And we all know that these lands, they're hereditary. They're passed from uh, generation to generation. Because it also allows us to govern ourselves. Yeah. It's the governance. Yeah. And that's where when we have, yes, the governor um, of American Samoa is the governor of the territory. He, he falls under Samoa's own communal uh, structure but they also answer to Big Papa United States. Yes. At the same time, we also are allowed to integrate the funnel or our own little set of Congress in there, our own little set of checks and balances. And that's where the, the funnel comes into play is because of that. Yes. And and um, the ASG, the FASA Moa, has a very unique um, way of handling business. It's not like the um, checks and balances here in the U.S. Everything is discreet in the American Samoa government. Uh, you guys know more about the politics of, you know, uh, back home than I do. Uh, I left it's a gossip. long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I left a gossip. long time ago. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't even follow the news or I'm, I'm not even sure what's going on back home, but. Yeah, every now and then it'll pop up on Facebook. You know, I read a little bit of stuff going on, but to, to get in the roots of it all, I yeah, I'm uh, I'm not there yet. Yeah. So I've yeah. I've learned a lot. So thanks, guys. I, I've learned a lot tonight. I, I I like bringing that up because that's a, a big thing for me. Is I believe we should uh, move on from the U.S. national title. Um, we're already bearing our allegiance and we like to take the grants and stuff, but frankly, the United States can snatch it from us at any point in time. At any point in time. Yes. All we need is the current, um, like climate to move towards having that necessity back in, uh, was it World War II when, American Samoa was a huge strategical position. That's where they came. The United States came in, set up those bunkers, set up the wharf, because it was access to the east, access to Japan. 
And so it was a good fueling depot. That's where we have all of these, us and Guam and Hawaii. Um, but at any point in time, I believe it's just a blanket. You know, they're letting us keep our quote unquote um, independence sort of by maintaining our culture and having our land rights and having those rights move around within certain specific families. But I believe at any point in time, they can take it away from us. Yes. Now, if we naturalize ourselves as U.S. citizenship or U U.S. citizens, we have a broader range. Yes, we, we now have to pay tax on those lands to the United States. And yes, it's going to change the dynamic of the United States. But we have more access to more funds. We have access to infrastructure. You know, the United States can come in and and really, really swap out the, just all of the, the corruption that goes on in the government. Yes. And that's my biggest thing, is the embarrassment from unaccountability of all of our governing people. Yeah. For some reason, when you get into the American Samoa government, you work in that office in, in Uchule, and then you start having access to these monies you have access to these funds that come in and you have a say or a, a whisper, an ear to somebody who does. And then you start getting kickbacks for certain things. There's a lot of corruption that goes on in the government. Yes, there's certainly um, corruption in ASG, but that's going to be a different topic for a different day. <laughs> we do not want to get into that today. <laughs> now, say, say with that corruption, <laughs> is uh, when you, if we, if we're going to, if we go all the way in, we, the United States is um, obligated to bring us up to speed. Yes. And that's just essentially it. Um, for me, it's primarily what it comes down to, yes, we love the facade more way, and, but we don't do all of it. We don't do e-fomas. We don't do our father of love. We don't do banishments. We don't do village council. Yeah, we have some fa'is for our paramounts and stuff, but we don't do as much of the culture, we just pick and choose. We're nitpicking what we want to do. And then everything else, we uh, we move on to uh, whatever is popular in the United States, in Big Brother United States. Yeah. And then we emulate, we copy the culture, we move on from there. But we only, we don't do the full culture. And what it comes down to me is quality of life. I believe the quality of life, those roads can be highly improved upon. Our electrical grid system could be, we could recover from hurricanes a lot more. The, 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 the tsunami warning system, is it still up? We all remember that CNN interview yeah. with uh, Honorable Kawisi. We remember. Did that, where'd that money go? Yeah. And so if we naturalize ourselves and fall under the umbrella of the United States and become full on citizens, we become privy to all of that. We become privy to the rights that are fully afforded to citizens that we enjoy when we come to the United States. That's why a lot of our people is leaving. A lot of the, yeah, it's it's the overstayers that are starting to populate to Tuila. Yeah. But everybody else is leaving. They're moving to the States. Why? Internet's better. Quality of life is better. Even the the, the, the food is better. We have access to facilities that are better. I'm all for American Samoa, and I, I hold pride in it. I was born there, but in reality, quality of life is much better here. If you want to maintain the true culture, move to Western Samoa. We all have ties to both. Yeah, and speaking on uh, quality of life, um, I've... I know a lot of people, many people who are against um, the uh, decision of American Samoa grant, uh, being granted U.S. citizenship, and I, I'm I'm one of those mainly because we have family back at home, and we have to understand that the quality of life of us here living in the U.S. is totally different from the quality of life that people in American Samoa or some more are used to. That's what they want. And mm. we've been exposed here in the U.S. to a whole different world. You know, the pay is different. 
Entertainment mm. is different. <laughs> and back at home, they like that slow, steady pace. But over here, now I notice for me, I've gotten very impatient. Ah, yeah. I've gotten very impatient. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, I cannot relax anymore. I have to, I have to be on the go. I have to do things. And on my opinion on this matter, I want the people who are residing in American Samoa to decide for themselves. Ah, they mm -hmm. decide for themselves. And us who are living here in the U.S., we do our own thing and leave that problem to them. If you yeah, want, it, if you want a, a citizenship here in the U.S., you come here, stay three months, and you get your own naturalization. Don't don't infringe on the happiness of others who are back home. Uh, and it for me, I got my citizenship a few years ago, and it only took me three months. And I was fortunate mostly because I was in the military and I was a veteran when I got out. They streamlined my process. That's why it took three months for me to get my citizenship. I got a good crew then, because yeah. it took me two years. Yeah. Well, it wasn't the military. It was here in Utah. <laughs> Utah. Street. Well, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> because I'm still a national. <laughs> and I hold on to my nationality. <laughs> I don't need the citizenship. Yeah. I can do everything I want. I don't need to vote on the president. Um, it's the electoral college's process to vote on the president. And quite frankly, to me, the elect the, the president is the only vote that actually would matter. Mm. If, if, if you were to take all federal votes, the president's the only one. I don't care who the next uh, secretary of defense is. I don't care who the part, who's going to be next commandant in Marine Corps or who's the governor or the senator of United States of Utah. Um, so I've held on to my nationality because for me, I want to retire back in Samoa. The only reason why I'm here is because my wife doesn't want to move to Samoa. Yeah. I would have moved back after I got out of the Marine Corps. And what were you trying to say, JP? I, I can feel you were trying to say something. Oh, no, 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 no. I was just saying um, the quality of life. I, I know we might look down on... People back in Samoa, but it all varies on the person, you know. I know a lot of my classmates that have come back uh, with the school in Hawaii, upstate side. Um, they've gone back to Samoa. They now hold really good jobs in Samoa, and they're, they're trying to make a difference, you know. They're trying to push out like those old folks, you know. Nothing, no offense to, to, to them, but I feel like our generation should step in and, and, and take over because they know, you know, they know what, what the people of Samoa need. You know, I have no room to speak on what needs to happen in Samoa, but I'm just saying um, our way of life, I've, I've gotten used to it. Like you said, Michael, I, I like it. I like it up here, you know. I, I don't have a lot back home, you know. Um, I don't have land. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm set to raise my kids and, and you know, put down roots and, and, and leave my legacy here. Um, but for, for everybody home, it may be different for them. You know, they've come out here, they've gotten their degrees. They're, they're going back home because they want to change. They grew up and saw, like you said, in the beginning, there's a bunch of corruption down there and they're, they're going back home because they, they want to change that. You know, yeah. they still have their folks there. They, they still have their families there. So way of life, it varies on, who the person is and what their background is. 